This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Chesapeake Eye Center. All right, mom and dad, you have a lot to juggle this time of year as the kiddos head back to school. The wardrobe, lunches, schedules, supplies, bedtimes. We can go on and on. Oh, we could, uh, but you'll want to see to it. <gasps> get it? Huh? See to it that something else is at the top of that list of back to school vision check. I'm not going to apologize for the joke. Either. I Here to explain it. why that's so important. This is board certified ophthalmologist with Chesapeake Eye Center, Dr. Katherine Smoot Hazelness. Thank Hello. you so much for joining us. Today. Nice it's to see to you. Here. It's, it's always fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But tell me why a back to school vision screening is so important. Well, there are a couple reasons. If you have a toddler, say, between the ages of anywhere from between newborn and five or six, it's a good time to get an initial screening by an ophthalmologist to see if there's any unusual refractive error, like they're real farsighted, real nearsighted, anything that could prevent normal visual development because that's your key range. Once they get into school, you want them to have their best vision so they can learn the easiest. When they start reaching around the age seven, eight, nine, you can start seeing growth spurts. And when you start seeing that, they can develop refractive errors such as nearsightedness. And you want them in their best corrections so they can do well at school. But there are other reasons. We can screen for other underlying diseases such as lazy eye or the eyes turning. We can also encourage the children to wear protective eyewear. It's a good thing if your children are in sports <coughs> that they're wearing something for protection. We don't think about the eyes, but an eye injury can be devastating yeah. when you're young. Do you think that a lot of parents think that their child doesn't have an issue and then they come in and then they're surprised? Oh, absolutely. This happens all the time. They go, well, they've been saying they couldn't see. I didn't really believe them. <laughs> and it, it's not uncommon that they'll be fine. And then as they develop that nearsightedness, that they start noticing that everybody else is seeing the board and they're not. And they're not. And they're and not. You said, so that's why it's so important to catch it early. Well, you want to catch it early if there's an underlying eye condition to prevent visual development because we can only intervene up until about age six, maybe seven, maybe eight. But, you know, for lazy eye, if you have to have patching or if there's some turning that might require surgery. Um, the other thing you want to look for is before age one, if the child has a lot of tearing, if your baby has a lot of tearing, is there a blockage in the, the tear passages? Oh. And if that's the case, you usually want to address that around age one or one and a half. You don't want to wait really long because then it, it becomes much more difficult. So the whole key is catching something early, intervening when it's appropriate right. in an appropriate fashion. So take us through a screening. How does it work? Um, <laughs> depends on the child, oh. whether they've had their nap time. Sometimes <laughs> it's very smooth. Sometimes it's like wrestling an alligator. Oh. But for the mo most time, we try to get a verbal vision if we can't. If we cannot get a verbal vision, we still can assess their visual functioning. Verbal vision. What's verbal vision? Meaning they can tell us, uh, I see a hand, you know, I see the oh, letter okay. E. Gotcha. But if they can't, we can tell by the way the eyes are lined, how they look, how they pick something up, what kind of visual functioning they have. Then we go through and we try if they can look at our slit lamp, fine. If they can't, we have other ways with our pen lights, we assess it. We look at the eyes if they're aligned. So their pupils get dilated. When they're dilated, that's when we can check the retina for disease. But also it paralyzes that muscle of accommodation so I can tell if they truly need glasses or don't. Uh -huh. So we don't have to have that child say anything to know if they need to be in a glasses correction or if they need to have some other thing. It's all about playing the game, getting the information, putting it together, and educating the parents. Get in and see your ophthalmologist. She's a pro. Boy, no <laughs> Dr. Catherine Smoot-Hazelness with Chesapeake Eye Center. Wonderful information Thank you. sharing with you.